In this video, I'd like to talk about ESD wrist straps, which are these right here. You may have seen or used these before. Basically, it's just a wrist strap with a metal electrode at the end of it with a detachable wire that goes to an alligator clip on the other end. So ESD wrist straps can sometimes be overlooked or uh, forgotten, but they are extremely important when it comes to handling electronic devices for a multitude of reasons, not just because it may damage the part, but it may damage the part in a way that's hard to detect. It could also cause things like explosions if you are working in an environment that has fumes that are flammable. Now, a proper wrist strap will have a built-in resistor on the inside of it. You can see here that this, this wrist strap has a 1M symbol behind it. And what that means is that this wrist strap looks kind of like this on paper and is effectively a resistor with the alligator clip at the end of it. And this resistor happens to be one mega ohms. So the resistor that's built into this is absolutely vital. And when you're working on electronics, you need to make sure that you have a wrist strap that has a resistor in it. Um, using a bare piece of wire or a wrist strap without a resistor can be really dangerous. And the resistor in this case provides two functions. In this case, it, for one, prevents sparks from occurring. The second purpose is to prevent possible electrocution. And this has to do with how the wrist strap works when it's attached to a piece of equipment. So the electrocution hazard is a bit more uncommon, but it's still good to keep in mind that this is a potential scenario that can happen when you're using wrist straps. So when you're working on a computer, for example, generally you would have the wrist strap attached to the metal case of the computer. And in doing this, you are referencing yourself to the computer and equalizing your voltage levels. And in this particular case, with the computer unplugged, that's perfectly fine. There's no inherent risk in doing that. But there are some circumstances where it's actually beneficial to leave the machine plugged in while you're working on it. And this is typically done if you have multiple devices you're working on at the same time. But in this case, what you've done is you're taking this computer and you're earth referencing it through the outlet. Your power outlet is going to have three pins. One's going to be live, one that's neutral, and one is ground or earth. Now, a fundamental principle of this is that the power coming in from live is always trying to make its way back to neutral. But an important thing to keep in mind in virtually every electrical setup is that the neutral and the ground are directly connected to each other. So that means when power is coming out of live, it's trying to go back to neutral, but it can also take the path to earth or ground, which will eventually lead it back to neutral. And this demonstrates the problem with this scenario, because by attaching your computer to the outlet, you've effectively earth referenced it or put it back to ground reference. And through this cable, you are now also earth referenced or ground referenced. This is the same, this symbol just means ground. The situation occurs is, imagine if you have a faulty device over here, or it could be an exposed conduit or something like that, that is putting out mains voltage, and you're not aware of that. If you went and touched that device somehow, or came into contact with it, well, now you have an issue of live power is trying to get back to neutral. And currently, the best way to do that is through you. And typically, if you touched something that was live, there's a potential that you could get electrocuted just from standing on the floor, you know, eventually it's going to lead back to ground in some way, but it's even more dangerous in this scenario because now you have this path where you have your arm directly connected to this computer, which is plugged in to ground. And since we know that ground is eventually going to go back to neutral, the power from this is going to go from this device through you to your computer, to the outlet, and then back to ground. And in that case, ground is going to go back to neutral, and there you go. You've just completed a circuit with you in the center. And this is where having a proper wrist strap with a resistor is so important. 
because if you didn't have a resistor or you were just touching the case, there would be nothing stopping this current from flowing. Whereas if you have a resistor in place, in this case, in this case it's a one mega ohm resistor, it's going to drop the possible flow of current so low that you're not going to have a direct path back to ground in this scenario. So it's sort of a trade-off because in on one hand you are, it's gonna take a bit longer in theory to disperse the static electricity built up on your body. But on the other hand, this one mega ohm resistor is potentially saving your life from this electrocution hazard. Now this of course doesn't solve the problem that there's a faulty device here, but you know, that's not really a part of this particular video. Um, and in this particular scenario, of course, you can just disconnect your device that you're working on, just make sure it's not plugged in. And this particular scenario is not as likely to occur. But the primary purpose of a ESD wrist strap is to prevent damage to electronics. And primarily this is because people are capacitors. Every human body has some amount of capacitance. So your body can physically store some electricity. And typically this is referred to as static electricity. The values of this stored static electricity can be pretty high in terms of voltage. Um, right about the five kilovolt mark is where you start feeling the electric shock. 10 kilovolts is a pretty substantial shock and 20 kilovolts is probably about as high as the shock can go realistically. But typically your average spark is gonna be somewhere in between these two of uh, five to 10 kilovolts. 10 kilovolts of static charge sounds like a lot, but fortunately the human body's internal capacitance is very, very low. So even though we can store a very high voltage, we don't have the capacity that's going to allow us to be dangerous. But unfortunately, this static shock that would not be harmful to us can be absolutely killer to electronic devices. Specifically, it can cause usually two different types of damage. One is catastrophic failure, and one is latent failure. Catastrophic failure is pretty obvious. It means that, there, that the device immediately stops working and it refuses to function. And the other type of failure is the much more common and insidious type, which is called latent failures. So a latent failure or a latent defect can look something like this internally. Um, if you'd imagine inside of a circuit chip, a microchip, for example, um, if I take one of these, it's going to have a lot of these very, very small traces where electricity flows. But if you imagine if I came into contact with this and I had a substantial amount of, of static charge that discharged onto one of these components, what could happen is that it could go inside of one of these devices and damage one of these traces. So it ends up looking like this. This image shows real world damage to a circuit. This is a microchip that's been scanned with an electron microscope. And you can see the, all the individual traces, but in particular, the zoomed in portion shows a part of the trace that has been severely damaged through electrostatic discharge. So while this trace was unaffected, this trace has been damaged and there's large chunks of it that may be missing or damaged. Um, but this is where it becomes a little bit tricky. When you're going to test whether it is normal or has some kind of latent defect, both of them can appear to work normally. Because if you see here, even though there's a lot of damage to this trace, there's still enough of it there that it may still operate perfectly fine. So if you're evaluating a board like this, you may run it through its tests and it may work fine without ever realizing that there is a pretty massive amount of damage inside of here. And as this is continually used, this can continually start eroding away and eventually break or have an intermittent connection, which can cause the entire system to stop working for what seems like no reason at all. It could also be the case that the damage is severe enough that it really affects the, the, the stability of the device, but the, the, the part of the circuit that it affects may be something that's not used very often. You know, if it's some kind of weird specialized circuit that only is used maybe once in a while, it may fly under the radar, um, whereas it, it's actually been damaged. So this is where ESC straps really come into play. Um, not only for the safety it provides you, but the safety it provides for your device that you're working on. Because effectively the, the wrist strap's job 
is to discharge a human body's capacitance. In its most simple form, it's taking the wrist strap, attaching it to your wrist with the electrode in contact with the skin, and then attaching it to generally the metal case of whatever you're working on. This allows any st built up static electricity to dissipate over top of the entire case. Now at that point, you and the PC are effectively at the same voltage potential. So the risk of a static shock occurring is pretty low. But where you attach this can actually be a bit tricky, especially with some types of medical devices. So in the next video, I'm going to go over some real world medical devices and non-medical devices to sort of give an idea of how this works.